All right guys, we are back in my garage for another video and today we're going to be talking about the motive reflex. A lot of you guys have reached out to me to help you with troubleshooting, if you're having issues with your install and just trying to get it all working. And if you've watched my previous videos then you'll see that I've installed a reflex on my 440i as well as my 340i. So with that in mind, I feel like I've got a good feel to help you guys figure out any kind of issues that you're having and just help you understand what to expect when you get your reflex so that you can set it up correctly the first time and prevent yourself from having a lot of issues as you try to get everything dialed in. It's one of those things that's not really that complicated, but it is pretty easy to make mistakes and then it can be pretty frustrating to fix them. And even though I think that the reflex kind of gets a bad rep, a lot of people say it's overcomplicated or difficult buggy you know causes a lot of issues I think it is pretty much the best controller on the market to help you support more fueling better safety and just get everything working as well as possible as you try to add horsepower to your build so we'll go ahead and talk about that in this video and hopefully you guys find it useful Now, as always, for everybody that's new to the channel, I create these videos to help keep you updated on the latest developments in our community, as well as discuss technical topics so that we have a better understanding of how our engines work. So if you're interested in more videos like that, be sure to subscribe because there will be a lot more coming out in the future. Now, really quick, before we jump into this, I want to remind you guys that I will have links down in the description to all of the products that I'm talking about in this video. If you use my code kern 417 you can get a nice discount as well. So definitely check that out if you're setting up your reflex for your car. Now, let's go ahead and hop into the details. So starting off with Motive Reflex, there are two different versions, a Reflex Lite and a Reflex Plus. The Reflex Lite is a simple port injection controller, and all that does is control your port injectors, it fires them sequentially, and gives you the additional fuel from you know, the extra six injectors on your manifold. Now, if you get a Reflex Plus, it adds a lot more capability by adding several other outputs. You can control things like your boost pressure. If you have an externally waste-gated turbo setup, you can control nitrous, meth injection, a low pressure fuel pump, you know, basically all of the other modifications you'd want to add on to your car to make more power, but it also has additional inputs so it can monitor things like ethanol content, fuel pressure, temperature for your coolant, oil, you know, basically anything that you want to monitor to make sure that you have safeties in place. So if your pressures get too low or your temperatures get too high, it can put the car into a soft limp mode and prevent you from actually damaging something in your engine. So there are a lot of additional capabilities with the Reflex Plus, and that's why I pretty much never recommend the Reflex Lite. It just gives you all of the potential improvements and safeties you need when you're adding these auxiliary systems to make your car support more power. Now also keep in mind that this is its own standalone controller. So a lot of people ask me if it works with different tunes and things like that. And generally speaking, it's its own thing. It stands by itself. It's flashed and operated by itself. So just like you flash your DME for your engine tunes and you flash your TCU for your transmission tunes, you will separately flash your reflex for your reflex tune. And that will control everything that's connected to the reflex to make sure they're all working in harmony. Now it does connect to your car's DME so that it can monitor things like your crank signal and all of those necessary items so that it can fire your injectors at the right time and things like that but it still is going to work and operate on its own. So you'll need a unique file and a specific flashing process just for the motive reflex. Now with that in mind, there are some accessories that I recommend everybody gets with their reflex, regardless of the setup. The first thing is a fuel pressure sensor, and this is going to monitor fuel pressure between your low pressure fuel pump and your high pressure fuel pump. Our cars from the factory do not have a sensor in this location, so there's no way to monitor fuel pressure on that side of the engine. Everything that you see is like, you know, the high pressure fuel system, so 2,900 or 5,000 PSI, depending on your platform. But by adding the sensor, you get that critical information you need to make sure that your low pressure fuel pump is keeping up. Now, if you're adding port injection, the most I've seen people make is an extra 50 horsepower or so before they max out their low pressure fuel pump. So that's why I think it's a good safety, just to make sure if you have your stock pump, 
you know that it's keeping up and not causing any issues. And also if you add an aftermarket low pressure fuel pump, it's a good way to make sure that the pump is turning on when it should and not having any problems. If it were to fail, then you can monitor those pressures and again, put the car into limp mode if you have any issues. So that's something that I recommend everybody get because if you're going to be adding more fuel, you wanna make sure that you're monitoring and make sure everything is safe. Another thing is a flex fuel sensor. By adding a flex fuel sensor, you can monitor your ethanol content and make sure that everything from your fuel flow to your boost pressure is being scaled appropriately based on how much ethanol you're running. Now, again, this is something that you can use regardless of your setup. You know, if you get your tune set up for pump gas or full E85, you can add this monitor. And also, if you already have a flex fuel kit on your car, like MHD or Dorch or something like that, you can use the existing flex fuel sensor as well. The only difference is instead of wiring up your flex fuel sensor to the MHD analyzer or your Zetronics box, you're going to wire it up directly to the motive reflex. So now your reflex will be able to take that reading, communicate with the DME and control all of your auxiliary systems. This is also why a lot of times I tell people, if you ever plan on adding a motive reflex in the future, it's sometimes a lot easier just to use that for flex fuel at the start, even if you're just on stock turbo, and then you can continue to expand your build and build into the capabilities of your reflex. But just having it from the start makes it easy. Now, if you don't have a flex fuel kit, the way I recommend adding in a flex fuel sensor is using the 360 loop fittings. Those will plug into your existing fuel lines and they won't add any additional length to the system or anything like that. It'll fit basically in the same location and it just adds the flex fuel sensor in that loop. So that's what I run on both of my cars. It works great, takes up a minimal amount of space. And again, you can just wire the reflex directly up to your flex fuel sensor to get the data that you need. The last thing is making sure that you have the right harness for your setup. So depending on your kit, it'll either come with the universal harness or it will come with a plug and play harness. I have the universal harness on my setup on my 440i and that comes with the loose lead. So you will tap the individual wires on your DME to get all of the signals that you need. I have the plug and play harness on my 340i and that one is different because instead of tapping any wires, you basically just plug into your engine harness with splitters that gets the signal and data that your reflex needs to work. So it's really just up to personal preference. If you're going to be installing it yourself, I recommend just be real with yourself. You know, if you're concerned about wiring and you don't wanna to have to deal with counting pins and things like that, the plug and play harness is the way to go. I know it's a little bit expensive, you know, it almost doubles the price of your reflex, but it is a really high quality kit and it's just something that works out of the box. I didn't have any problems with it. When I did the universal leads on my 440i, I did have issues at first that thankfully I was able to resolve and a lot of people do work through those issues. But again, it's just kind of up to you on which route you wanna go. Now for installation, there are a lot of different ways that it can go. I have installation DIYs for the universal leads on my 440i as well as the plug and play harness on my 340i. So feel free to check those out if you want a little bit of insight on how the installation usually works. But the first thing that I recommend before you do anything is go to Motive's website, click on the reflex option at the top and go through their Dropbox. They've got files for all the installation instructions, wiring diagrams and things to help you plan out how that's going to work. Read through that completely, make sure you understand it before you dig into anything. Then at that point, you know, you really just want to follow their process to get everything installed. It is pretty simple, but it is also pretty easy to mess up. So pay attention to the details, especially if you're counting pins and things like that. Do not go off of the wire colors. You need to count the actual pins on your DME to make sure that you're tapping the right wires. They might change the colors depending on the model year and options and stuff like that on the car. So it's just not really a reliable way to make sure that you're tapping the right wires. So again, count the pins, count the pins. That's the only way to make sure you're tapping the right wires that you need to get the signals for your motive reflex. Now, if you don't have a tune set up yet, or if you're still waiting for your turbo kit to come in or whatever, you can install your motive reflex. Just leave it unplugged and it won't work. The car will operate just as it did before. And then when you're ready to actually flash it and get it tuned, you can plug it back in and that will enable your port injection and things like that. So when you're tuning and getting it installed, sometimes people like to get it on early and just make sure they get it out of the way. That's an easy way to do it just to make sure that it doesn't turn on your port injectors or something when you don't have a tune set up for it yet. 
Now, speaking of, let's go into the actual setup of your motive reflex. Again, go through the guide on motives website to get familiar with how all of this works. The first thing that you're going to need is to download Tuner Pro. This is the software you'll use to connect to your motive reflex and flash your maps to your motive reflex. So it is freeware, you can download it for free, but just make sure that you have a computer that works with it. And once you download it, you'll be able to set everything up. Now you also need a micro USB cable. The micro USB connection is on your reflex. Then the other connection can be whatever works with your laptop. Keep in mind, if you just grab a random cable around your house, it may not work. You need a cable that has data connection. Some of them are built for charging only, so if they work for certain accessories or toys or something, then it only charges and powers your unit. It can't actually send data. And obviously, if you're going to be flashing a tune to the reflex, you need a cable that can transmit data as well. So what I recommend a lot of people do is just go to your local store and buy a new phone cable. That's going to be one that pretty much always works with data connection because if you connect your phone to your, like your laptop or something, it'll allow you to pull off you know, photos and things like that. Also, if you get a long enough cable, just a little pro tip, you will be able to leave it plugged into your reflex and you can run it through your firewall so that you can access it from inside of your car. So basically you can put your laptop on the passenger seat, plug it in, flash your reflex and do whatever you need without you know, taking apart your cow panels and stuff to access your reflex. Now after that, you're going to need three files. The ADX file and the XDF file can be found on Motive's website. So again, if you go to their Dropbox and go to their tuning files folder, you'll see the startup maps and things that they have for people to get going. But what you want is the latest XDF file and ADX file for your specific engine and platform. Once you get those opened up in Tuner Pro, they will always be linked to Tuner Pro. So you really only need to set it up once. But after that, you'll also need your bin file. And that is the file from your tuner that actually has all of the flash data on how your reflex should work. So get that bin file from your tuner, upload that in every revision. You will upload the new bin file, but leave the XDF and ADX files the same. Also make sure that you follow the initial setup guide that's in the Motive Reflex documentation. They'll show you all the checkboxes and things that you need to enable in the Tuner Pro configuration to make sure that it works properly. So just make sure that all of your screens match the pictures that they're showing in their installation guide. Now after that, you're ready to flash your bin file. And every time I do a flash, I press these three buttons in sequence. The first button is kind of like that plug and that's the connection button. That will make sure that you're actually connected to the motive reflex in order to flash your file. The next one is the upload button and what that does is it will upload the bin file from Tuner Pro to your motive reflex. Then the last button I like to press is the verification button and that will make sure that the file that's on Tuner Pro matches what's on your motive reflex. So if there are any flashing issues or anything that could cause a problem, this is the way that you'll catch it. Just click that additional button and it'll make sure that the file is on your reflex and ready to go. Now, each of these buttons has a pretty distinct, you know, sequence of beeps to make sure that it's working. So when you click the connection button, it sounds like this. When you click the upload button, it sounds like this. And when you click the verification button, it sounds like this. So you'll hear those beeps every time you get a successful flash, and that will just make sure again that you're doing everything properly. Also at the bottom of the screen, it flashes a little green successful label. So again, that's further confirmation that you're flashing it properly. I don't know why that the little red icon on the left is always there, but it is normal. It doesn't mean that you're having any connection issues with your motive reflex. So if you see that, just ignore it and look for that green flashing label at the bottom. A lot of times if it doesn't work, it'll flash red and tell you that it was unsuccessful. So that's what I would actually pay attention to when I'm flashing files. Also make sure you're flashing the appropriate patch to enable the advanced canvas features, especially if you have MHD like I do, there are a lot of cool features that it uses to monitor your port injectors and potentially put the car in limp mode if there are any issues with your motive reflex. So what you're going to do is go to the quick setup area and pick the appropriate category from the folders that you see and pick the patch for the platform and the tuning software that you're using. So for me, I use the MHD B58 patch. And once you patch that, it will stick. You can confirm it by going back to the screen if you want in the future, but the patch will never come off for all intents and purposes. So make sure you patch your file to get all of the full capabilities that you should have with your tuning platform. And now let's talk about troubleshooting. 
Again, 99.9% .9 of problems come from wiring issues. I've had multiple people tell me that their wiring is perfect. They've gone over it again and again and again. And then three weeks later, they realize, oh, this tap wasn't working right or this wasn't on the right plug. In my case, the issue that I had is I had actually tapped the right wire. But if you guys look at the taps, you know, there's basically a little needle in there that pierces the insulation and touches off on the wire in order to get the signal for your car. In my case, I didn't realize that the needle went next to the wire instead of actually piercing the insulation. So the wire was just sitting next to it. And that's why I wasn't getting the cam heartbeat that I was supposed to. So again, just go through your work again and again. Sometimes you literally have to take it apart and inspect things to make sure that you're doing it properly. A good way to make sure that you're getting all of the right signals is just to idle the car while your laptop is connected to your mode of reflex. And if you go into the logging screen, you can see all of the data for your cam heartbeat, your crank position, your engine speed, and things like that. All of that should be active. The numbers should be fluctuating a little bit so that you know that you're getting the right data. If anything is just like frozen or stuck at zero, then it's potentially an issue that you're not getting the right signal for that one. So follow the wire from the installation diagram, make sure that it's wired up to the right wire, make sure that it's piercing the wire and getting a good connection, you know, all of that to make sure that it's, you know, going to work. Otherwise, when you drive the car and floor it, your port injection isn't going to turn on. Another way to make sure that your port injection is working is to work with your tuner to get a nice conservative base map for your engine and for your mode of reflex. Once you set those up and you floor it and do your logging, you should see a pretty sharp drop in your fuel trims when the port injectors turn on. So it should drop to like negative 50 or negative 20%. That will tell you that the port injectors are firing and now the car is trying to pull fuel to compensate for the extra fuel that's coming from your port injectors. So again, just get like a conservative setup from your tuner, nothing with crazy boost that'll cause backfires and fuel pressure drops and things like that. Something where you can just double check to verify that everything's working the way that it should. This is also a great way to make sure that your low pressure fuel pump is turning on and things like that. Again, keep in mind, I have made a low pressure fuel pump DIY that shows you how to wire it up and make sure that it's turning on as well. So I'll have all of that linked down in the description, but lots of different ways that you can make sure from logs that all of your reflex functions are working properly. Now, one last thing I wanna comment on that I didn't hear a lot about, but I had a pretty big issue with my car because every time I turned it off, it would just not go to sleep. I would hear this buzzing sound and these clicks and things that would not stop for like 10 minutes. Now, if you're having this issue, Motive actually identified what the problem was. I thought it was the Valvetronic motor or something that wasn't, you know, being able to be calibrated, but it actually is apparently the electronic thermostat and it's some kind of aspect of the reflex not allowing the car to go to sleep. So if you move your power wire from the DME tap to a fuse box location that is a switched fuse, that will allow the motive reflex to completely go to sleep when you turn off the car and it will prevent it from clicking and buzzing and basically keeping your engine awake. So good news is it's pretty easy to solve. It took me a little over a year to figure it out, but just by moving the reflex power wire from the DME to the fuse box, I've completely resolved the issue. So hopefully that helps anybody out that's having the same problem. And yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Again, thank you to Motive for creating such a useful solution for those of us that want to add additional power to our cars. If you guys are having any additional issues, feel free to reach out to me, leave a comment, you know, message me, and I can try to help you out with troubleshooting. But just again, go through your wiring. Make sure that it's all done properly. Make sure all of the wires are correct. Make sure the taps are getting a good signal. And that will solve pretty much all of the issues that I typically hear about. So I think that's it for this video. Thank you guys for watching and I hope this helps. And if you have any other questions or comments, leave them down below. The first thing, I'm making a video, hold on. I'll come in later. What? Yes, you can get your tablet and your Oreos.